Hello creative people and uh, welcome to this video. Uh, my name is Mina Shamali and today having a look at Adios Adagio violins and cellos. So I'll be doing this in two parts. This video is for the violins and the part two video will be for the cellos. Um, so what I've done here is written a track and uh, I'll be doing a bit of an insight in context. So in the context of the track, use that as a springboard to give some insights, some personal opinions of and try to show what this library does. So some useful things I've found about it and useful ways I've found of working with it. Uh, so we'll have a listen to the track, Love's Apocalypse, and uh, we'll get into it. So there we have it, that's the track, uh, which I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, it's nothing too complex, just orchestral, choral, screen in the background, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, my own little sense of drama, whatever. 
but that's uh, cool. So let's dive straight in. Uh, first thing, let's have a look at the sections that it offers. It's uh, got the ensemble, the divisi, and the solo, plus an ambiance section. Uh, so I'll get straight into the ensemble part of it. Uh, look at the legatos. So I'll just open up one of the legato sections here. This is my uh, legato contact instance. Uh, so the ensemble uh, part of it is basically 11 violinists um, that they've recorded in cathedral um, with all manner of legato transitions. And I suppose the one thing that I want to say about this library is one of the things that kind of makes it what it is is the approach that Trolls and Colin have taken to the sampling, which I'm, I'm dubbing dynamic sampling. Uh, I don't know if I've coined this term or if that's actually what they just use when they to describe it, but uh, simply what they've done is they focused on as natural an action as possible uh, of the violinists they were recording and try to get the dynamic variations as a lot of options that are present in the library. Uh, plus, in approaching the legato, they've kind of gone for different types of legato based on different feels from kind of different scores. Uh, they talk about it at length in their podcasts and their videos, um, which are a good listen. So, you know, if you don't know much about uh, Adagio and you really want to get their perspective on it and how they've worked with it, uh, have a listen to their podcasts. They'll be available on their SoundCloud, their website, everything. Uh, so we'll have a quick look at uh, the different types of uh, legatos. Uh, and I'll show you like the legatos that I used in the track as well, which you would have heard already. But uh, first, we've got a legato instinct, instinct legato. Uh, now, some of these they've named after some uh, movie score titles. So this would be like the basic instinct kind of sound. It's not necessarily Joel Goldsmith in a box, but it's the kind of what they were thinking when they were sampling it. Uh, and you can see these all these different key switches. Um, key switching here. Uh, I'll explain those in a minute. I'll just go with a longer arc because that's, that's what these are describing are different dynamic arcs. So I'll just give you a quick listen to what it sounds like, right? So uh, this is, you know, the one of the most basic, or not basic, more um, ubiquitous, more all-rounder kind of legatos. I don't know, I've lost the word. It's like a little slur, you know, it's not too, too over the top, not too exaggerated, but it's there, it's present. Now, you'll notice it kind of, it jumps if you don't leave enough of a space between the notes, but I, that can also be a function of, no, it's not a function of the expression map, but it's one of those things that, it's not a deal breaker by any means, but when you're playing it, if it pops up, I don't really mind, then I can just kind of fix it in the piano roll afterwards. Um, it does happen, so it's, a, it's, this is a reality that I've just, you know, this is what you hear. As you heard, there was a bit more of a gap there, and it worked. So well, I suppose with the dynamic arcs, you can kind of use those to your advantage and then kind of shorten the notes based on that. So you don't have to hold it all that long, depending on what your intention is. And what I tend to do is I'll just play a line using one arc, or it's the same crossfade, even if that's more appropriate, and um, then do the different key switches afterwards. And I'll go to these key, sw key switches in a bit. Um, but yeah. And you notice here, I'm using the mod wheel to control the dynamics. And uh, expression here is routed to CC11, which is, you know, your expression pedal. But I've got, a, I've got the mod wheel controlling that as well. 
um, through the transformer in Cubase. Uh, or, well, it's in the MIDI inserts, if you want to have a look. That's what it's like. Um, and that just makes my job easier if I want to control more of the dynamics. Uh, but the core concept here is that they've approached a lot of these dynamics naturally. So if I use this longer arc, for example, with that, using the mod wheel, which I should do for the rest of them, but you'll have a listen to what the dynamics kind of sound like in a, norm, in a longer arc. So see, I'm still holding the note, but it's already faded out more naturally. And you combine that with use of the dynamics and the expression, and you can get even more control and a more natural sound coming out of the sample itself, which is an approach, you know, it's used in a lot of, li a lot of older libraries, and that's why they kind of play so well, like these choirs in Spectrosonic's Omnisphere, like the Symphony of Voices choirs. Uh, a lot of the, some of these dynamics have been built into the samples, and, you know, they sound good straight off the bat without using dynamics. Um, I'll try that with the medium arc. So yeah, it plays really nicely and really naturally by itself. And even if I cut it short, it doesn't sound all that bad. It doesn't sound bad at all to begin with. <laughs> But you can even if you can even have more control of that side. Control that with a mod wheel, and you've got more of dynamic. Um, so move on to the next one, and this happens to be one of my favorites, the Village Legato. So it's like similar to the feel of the Village by James Newton Howard, the score to that movie. So I love the tone of this. Right, let's play that with the medium arc. I love the tone of this, and it's just so pulled back and restrained, and not over the top, but just so beautifully recorded and beautifully done so have a listen to this and just i'll leave the dynamics at the top here I don't know. I just melt with that. <laughs> it's so, it's like similar to the instinct, but not as pronounced. It's just pulled back, and it's really beautiful for these kind of more subtle sections, these more subdued sections, and those kind of they kind of can really pull the emotional thing um, out of it. The emotional thing. I don't know what the emotional thing is, but whatever. That is the village, and the emo slur, the emotional slur. Um, has a more pronounced kind of uh, transition. So this is like a lot of, the, you hear either in the way it's recorded or in the way the, tra in the way the sustains are recorded or in the way the transition is recorded, that's where you get those kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, feelings, feels for the, for the patch. So I'll just do that with the medium arc and have a listen to this one. As you can tell, it's more pronounced. So I use that with, the, I think with the longer arc, it sounds even better. And you control that with the dynamics as well, even more. So it's very pronounced, very over the top, um, which I think it's definitely the, the, the intention behind a patch like this. Uh, soft emo slur, which is the other one, is uh, 
sort of similar but at a lower dynamic softer dynamic and it becomes the focus if you want a line that is focused on the same kind of emotional expression with the portimanos and the really kind of over the top kind of thing um you but you want it to kind of be a, bit, a little more restrained it's restrained and over the top at the same time i don't know how to explain it but dynamically restrained but over the top in terms of what it's what the phrase is actually doing um so i'll just do that with the, without moving dynamics So, I, th I suppose this, I hope this illustrates what I mean by, you know, over the top and restrained at the same time. <laughs> um, the, the thing about it, if, if you've noticed here, I'm using the light versions of the patches and there's a knob missing for anyone who does have the library. Uh, there's usually a speed knob that you can actually use to alter what the transition sounds like. So these are the naturally recorded transitions and transition speeds, but if you use the full version of the patch, then you can uh, tweak the speed to kind of, you know, be a little less over the top, a little, le a little, little faster, um, and kind of still maintain the same feel. So it's it's pretty natural um, in most cases. I don't feel the need to use it because, for one, this keeps my template size low because each one of these light versions are, you know, 18, 19, 20 megabytes. Um, maybe the biggest one is like 35, 36. But, you know, it works for me. And if I really can't work with the line, then I'll just replace the patch with the full version. Um, and on top of that as well, if the Lorays, which I'll talk about, are um, tempo synced in some of the full version patches that are also, you know, they're denoted with TM Pro, which is Contact Time Machine, Time Machine 2, Time Machine Pro, sorry, in Contact 5. That's what I mean. Okay, cool. Moving on to the next one, Dolce, Dolce Legato. Um, this one is kind of softer, sweeter. Dolce is actually Italian for like dessert or sweets, uh, I think. It's what, what they give us in the menu in Italian restaurants. Dolce. But uh, I suppose it's meant to be the kind of... Uh, the sweeter, the, the, uh, the softer dynamics and kind of making those dynamics really speak. So let's give you that. So I'll give you, compare that to the instinct, for example. So. Or the Evo slur. So. And Dolce would sound like... So it's, it's a subtle difference, but it's definitely there. And, you know, you just pull the dynamic back down. And it kind of really, I think it works. And you combine that with some of the other legatos in a, within the context of a song, different parts of a track that you're working with. And it really makes the, the track kind of speak out differently. Um, and it's the same players as, uh, doing the different things, so, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, Lega E.T. Legato, so E.T., which is, you know, John Williams. Uh, and this is kind of somewhere between uh, between the emo slur and the instinct. It's, it's dramatic, I suppose is, is the easiest way to say it. Uh, have a listen to it. I don't know, it's a nice sound, and, and I worked, like, I used that as well as the emo slur in different parts of the track, because it kind of, it's similar to the emo slur and what it does, but it's a little 
a little more restrained. It's not like, oh, that was a really bad example. You know, it's a really kind of, it's, like, it's dramatic, but at the same time, it's not, the transition is not over the top. Um, so, yeah, that's just me. <laughs> and pardon the uh, the weird uh, the weird enactments of strings. <laughs> now legato perdition sordino, which is like you know the muted strings with the with the sordino mute, and uh, this would be like road to perdition, Thomas Newman kind of thing. And by the way, all these are I, I don't necessarily know all of these straight off. It's just they're all written in the manual, um, which is a very good read. Should, sorry, which is a very good read. Should definitely give it a chance. Give it a, give it a read. Uh, so have a listen to this. So, it's kind of a nice, it's a pretty nice sound. Use it with the dynamics as well. It really speaks. So, you know, some really nice muted strings here. And I'll just show you the sections that had some legatos in them. Uh, so, if I use the ET legato in this section. So I'll just solo the strings so you can hear them. Now, if you notice here, I've used a few key switches. I've I did put them in after the fact. I just worked with one of the uh, one of the key switches. And first thing is just I just did that with probably the medium or the longer arc, uh, with a bit of my modulation as I played, and then applied these key switches afterwards. Because then you could hear every note and see, okay, I think this would work better with one key one key switch or the other. You don't necessarily need to. You can definitely do it with one or two key switches. Um, primarily but this gives you a lot more options now, this is this is the thing about libraries like this it's all about a lot of options a lot of different options it's not trying to supersede the, the la scoring strings or the cinematic strings or the hollywood strings everyone's doing something different every one of them is giving you different options uh so what i'm going to do is i'll just show you show you most of the key switches they're all this they're mostly the same in the uh, uh across the legatos so i'll just take the i'll take the village because i love the village legato so the village and show you the different key switches. So first up, uh, your natural key switch and have a listen to this. Now it's cut, you feel it's cut short. It's not actually cut short. What it is, is it's just what they've done with the transition itself. It's the transition recorded without the sustained note that follows. Why would it be included? Uh, Apparently, there's been a lot of debate between Trolls and Colin and the team about whether to include it or not. Uh, but I've found that it's useful in a few situations, which I'll get into in, in, in a, a bit later. Uh, but one of the situations, it works really well with kind of faster, faster passages. You know, it's natural and it doesn't kind of uh, have a difference. Like, this is the same, the same crossbow. If I just wanted natural, it'll be a little more appropriate and it'll be kind of, it really works well with stuff like this.
because then it won't be over the top and you won't have anything kind of fading in afterwards. But it's it's a use. It's not necessarily you don't have to use it that way. Um, but I think it's a really cool way to use the natural key switches. Uh, you got the same crossfade, which is similar to the way Hollywood strings and cinematic and LA scoring strings and all the other string libraries work, is your normal uh, dynamic crossfade. So. So, you know, uh, they've included that because if you want to work with it, you can work with it. And especially if there are notes which go longer than um, longer than, than the dynamics, the dynamic arcs allow, just use a sustained crossfit to do those. See, you wouldn't be able to do those with this dynamic cross phase because, you know, within context of melody, you're not really always just stuck on one note for a while. But for whatever reason you're using it in the context of your arrangement, it's there, it's available. It's fantastic. And I really commend the ADO team for doing that. Um, next, next up, we have a medium arc, which is, you know, kind of takes place in kind of medium, medium length notes, medium length melodies. Um, so let's do it. You know, so. And you can hear the dynamics, you can hear just the player's natural movement, and that's that's what, what they were going for, is like, real players don't cross-fade velocity layers, you know? They're not just like, here's a full-blown forte, and here's a full-blown, or a less-blown, uh, mezzo-piano. You know, it's not going to be crossfaded between them. Players naturally just move between those dynamics. They don't just crossfade between two different layers of their own playing. Uh, I hope that made sense. But that's what the team is going for. And I think it provides a really, um, a really great tool. It's a really great different layer um, to go on top of uh, your melodies. Uh, the longer arc sounds like this. So this would be, you know, for your longer melodies, you're kind of slower, you're more subdued, more, more, maybe more emotional. If, if you know, long notes are more emotional, usually, I don't know. Um, heavy vibrato, you know, you're a bit more intense. And see the natural fade out right there. And speaking of vibrato, you'll notice here there's a vibrato control, which I haven't used because, you know, the tra the <laughs> most of these dynamic arcs includes the vibrato that the players apply. However, I think this, in the 1.1 update when this was released, um, they've included non-sustained, uh, sorry, non-vibrato sustained recordings, which you can crossfade between with the vibrato. So this is what it sounds like. Which, you know, it's not really an issue for me because the vibrato is already there. It's already included. I don't really need to do much else with it. Um, if I need additional control over the vibrato beyond what the, what the players have naturally provided, then, you know, it's there. Definitely, yep, you can use it. Okay? Uh, now, short bows. So you've got short bow one, short bow two. Uh, what you'll notice when you play this library is... The first note is always a sustained crossfade. And, you know, Trolls and Colin have, all, have said that. So obviously this is not a short bow. Um, but these, it's always after the transition that whatever the key switch is on will be triggered. And 
And, you know, they have a very good reason for that. Is like you can shape the attack of the first note and then jump into the next one. What if you want to use a Lorray at the beginning or a sharper attack, especially with the sustained crossfade? It doesn't exactly have a sharp attack. Well, I have my ways of getting around it. It doesn't bug me. Um, I can I usually just layer like a staccato underneath uh, to kind of, you know, fill in a bit of that attack and, you know, get it to the natural level. Or I use one of the Lorrays. Uh, if I want to start with the Lorray or put a Lorray in the middle of a phrase um, in a different way, I can always do that. I can just layer it in. And, then, you know, it works really well. It's you just got to understand the philosophy of the library, and I think that's part of the thing. You, you know, understanding the philosophy of a library will help you work really well with with how it was intended to be used, and using that to your own advantage to kind of do different things with it um, and experiment it with. It. So you know, it's there. Uh, so yeah, just back to the short bow. And. By the way, the disclaimer here that I need to make is uh, most, there's no EQ, there's barely any, no, there's no EQ on the strings, and just a tiny bit of reverb to kind of complete the tail of the hall. Uh, they've been recorded in a church, which, you know, I love church and cathedral ambiances and, and reverbs. Uh, every time I'm in, in a cathedral, I'm like, oh, I want to I wanna get an orchestra in here, I want to record it, I want to hear it. Uh, and I have actually, I've actually heard opera in a, in a church, which is really nice. Uh, that's besides the point. Anyway, uh, that's part of the thing with the short bows, for example, is rather than just ending a note with your mod wheel or whatever, it's already done, and it works for some, some parts of the passages. Uh, so short bow 2 would be shorter. You know, so. I suppose you could also, it could be similar to the natural, but this is actually meant to be a short bow, you know? So, in a way, it's they've kind of provided you three different types of short bow with these legatos, not just two. So, uh, it works really well. I, I enjoy it immensely. Uh, now, the Lorrays, so what am I doing? Lorrays. Uh, they're, they're different for most of them, and these aren't tempo synced that I'm using. Um, but, you know, you can tempo sync them within the context of the track. So, here's Lorraine Repetition 1. You know, you can use them for those types of, uh, those types of uh, phrases. No, I don't always just like, okay, let's just put on a little ray and see what happens. Sometimes I'll come up with a phrase on the piano. I always use a piano in the things like... Um... So I'll play, it, I'll play a, a, uh, a melody like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's where the Luray's tempo sync would really work. Um, and I could combine that with... There's an actual Luray patch that you can use with the violins. Um... And com use, use of those combined really kind of gets you those really nice sounding results. Uh, so yeah, so here's back to the Village Legato. Uh, Lorraine Repetition 2. So it's a little more, I don't know, pronounced. Uh, repetition 3. A little more separated. And Repetition 4. Separated at an even, you know, a larger dynamic or a higher dynamic. So now, you can do some, some great things when you put these in a tempo sync context. Uh, so yeah, that's... Now that's most of, most of the... Uh, key switches there's a couple of uh, a couple of patches which have rather than longer arc they have stronger arc which is kind of more okay i'll just play it. i'll play it for you to show you <laughs> here's the emo uh, emo slur light uh, sorry soft emo slur um so you got your medium arc which sounds like this 
And then stronger arc is actually shorter. I think it's just more intense. Okay, I lie, it's longer. Some patches, I swear it was shorter, but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> um, it's different. And then you got more vibrato and wide vibrato, which, you know, could work really well in a more unsettling kind of... More vibrato. Because the sustain already has a lot of vibrato in it. And your wide vibrato. Which I think works really well even on to kind of really intensify the emotion. So, you know, more vibrato at a softer dynamic and yeah, I think, is it in Dolce as well? Yep, in the Dolce. Uh, just give you a sound for the that more vibrato and wide vibrato. So can really get some intense stuff happening there, which is great. Um, so, you know, that's that's the legatos. That's uh, the ensemble legatos. Um, and one thing you'll, you'll have heard prominently here as well is the shorts um, that I've used. The uh, ensemble shorts here, especially, um, especially this section. So... <laughs> So I've used these in com combination with the measured tremolos, but I'll have a look at them, uh, at what is offered. So they've got different types of spiccatos and staccatos, uh, marcato, pizzicato, and collegna. Uh, let's just have a quick listen to them, shall we? Shall we? Yes. Let's shall. Let's shall. I'll just put the down here. The mod wheel also further um, controls the dynamic on top of the velocity. So say you want to play like something steady, but still put the dynamics down. If it sounds weird, my 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 latency is a little up because of the buffers up, because um, I had to put all the mixing into the session. So without you know bouncing out, because I just wanted to show it straight up, straight up live. A staccato, uh, spiccato on the bow. opposed to this but you know you can combine them together and kind of get a lot more variation and get tap spiccato which is a little softer and a little sharper um, and then you get staccato So that's your staccato. Now bounce this spiccato, and that's the one I've used in this track. The thing I thought about it to begin with, it sounds like this, right? Originally I thought it was tempo synced, and then I came to realize, when I used it with the cellos, that they were not tempo synced. Uh, neither the light variety nor the full variety. And I realized this is just, this is just how the articulation sounded. It ended up working for the violins because they were the tempo was very close to what they were recorded, but you know, they they are what they are. Uh maybe AD are gonna do a tempo synced version, I don't know. Uh but they as they stand right now, they're not tempo synced. But they do sound great. 
Why? Because it's naturally the phrasing of these of these kinds of phrases. So. so. And obviously, in real time, I would my latency would be a lot less. But this is what they sound like, and they're naturally there. That's the same kind of concept behind libraries like action strings from from native instruments. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, like you know these phrases, these short phrases, recorded and very playable. Uh, it's there. It's an option. You can do the same kind of thing with your spiccato and bow, like if you play it really well. Or your, your feather spiccato. If my legato wasn't, if my, not my legato, my lag wasn't up, it would sound a lot better. But anyway, uh, <laughs> arp spiccato. So this applies a sem similar trick to Cine Sample Cine Brass uh, with their double tonguing script, which means you put down a note and release it, and you know, they'll, uh, it'll insert a note on release. Which means you got to play really precisely to get these kind of things. But that means you can do all these kind of faster patterns. It's a trick to do these faster patterns rather than program. See, I'm only doing it once. So now it's it's another way to do it. Uh, a pretty pretty neat option to have. Marcato. Uh, you'll hear that in this section right here. You know, I got that combined with the marcados from the cellos and uh, the choir screaming out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think it works really well. So let's just have a listen to it also. On its own. But you know, if you combine it with some of the, one of the legatos, um, at least in the first note, you just layer that, layer that on top, you can get a stronger attack. You can do those staccatos as well, but um, say for example here, I've got the, the ET. I'll get the marcato on here. Sorry about that. So that's uh, that's a lot of a uh, lot of attack right there, and then you know it's just an option. The options are there, and if your sustain, if your attack on your first sustain is lacking, use a marcado, use a staccato. It's cool. It's there. <laughs> Don't panic. Um, we got a pizzicato. This is what the pizzicato sound like. I didn't use pizzicato. I there was a section I was going to use pizzicato in, but I didn't end up using it in any in any capacity, just because I didn't think it worked with the track. You know, it's nice. It's kind of loose. Um, in the full version, you get a tightness, which kind of like tightens up the attacks. But uh, you know, I felt the loose, which is more natural. It worked. Um, Bartok Pizzicato, which is, you know, sounds like this. And Collegno, which is like, you know, a very familiar sound. So yeah, so that's uh, that's the shorts um, that the library offers. Uh, now, get into the dynamic bowings. Dynamic bowings. Well, actually, now I'll get to the measured tremolos quickly because I use these in conjunction with uh, with the shorts. Um, so where are measured tremolos? Okay, there we go. So uh, these are tempo syncs. I've used the tempo sync variation. Um, and they're controlled by mod wheel. 
So not not velocity. Velocity won't do anything. Now, <laughs> I like what they've done here because they got tremolo fast, which is originally recorded fast, and tremolo slow, which sounds like this. So it's a little more separated, which works wonders in this kind of thing. Excuse me one moment. Apologies for that. That was a relentless phone call that wouldn't stop. But yes. Um, so what I was saying. Tremolos. Slow. More separated. These are more you know, connected. You know, they work. And then they've got Sordino measured tremolos, which I think are fantastic. They sound like this. Play in time, that'll be good. <laughs> and sorting in a fast. And some effects, which I've used one of these here. And effects two. You know, they're great and they're not, it's not heavy, heavy on effects, this library, but where you do need it, they've, they're very well recorded and they shine and they're tempo synced and it's fantastic. Uh, of course, you can do this in half in normal time because this is double time. So I'll just do that. In... Oops. If it's slow. This is what it was naturally recorded at. Half time. <laughs> and you may not use this for more natural effect, but you can use this for kind of your hybrid tracks where it's like really kind of distorted uh, in what it does. <laughs> okay, so dynamic Boeings. These are great. These kind of bring back the joy of playing keyboards that had a slow strings patch that had a lot of the attack and the release and uh, dynamics already built into the track. <laughs> so, um, is that the only... I have two different versions of the dynamic bones and there's a reason for that. I use them together, but I'll just run quickly through um, some of the key switches and what they sound like. Dynamics full up, so the dynamics are all built into the patch. And some of these can be really fun to kind of, you know, s slip in from one part of one kind of chord to another note on its own. I think it's pretty cool. And let's have another look at some more. Some more intense ones. And some, you know. So the key thing here again is options. A lot of options for different dynamics and you can use these kind of things. This is stuff with more attack. Sorry. 
So I think you can see, you can see each of these will be useful in different situations. They've even got Strudino dynamic Boeings, which are... Ah, what are you doing? My bad. Okay, there we go. Sordino dynamic Boeings. <laughs> Try to be dramatic. And some more forte. So, definitely a lot of use for these. And <laughs> what you'll notice here is uh, I've got two versions of it, and there's a reason. I use a different key switch for each one of them to kind of combine the sound of them. Like here, I've got this part using... So this part is using the MF to F strong key switch, which has a certain sound, which I really liked on its own. Sorry, sorry about that. I really liked on its own. And then in the context of the track, it needed a bit more attack. So I used a different key switch on a, uh, to combine them. So this one had more attack. Combined together, they sound like this. So you get the the head end, or you know the beginning, which with the stronger attack, and then the tail end with a lot more of the the flow coming in, the sweep. And so you use them together and they blend really well, um, which, you know, <laughs> it's just another thing I really like. Again, options, options, and options. Um, and the last thing in the ensemble of parts, the Division and solo parts are very similar in a lot of these, so I'll just go, it won't be long. But the Lurays, and these are tempo synced, so where are, where are my Lurays? There we go. Uh, tempo synced, and... I've used them in a couple of different situations here. Uh, first situation is this part. So I'll just solo it out. This is the part with the solo violin going on top. Um, but you hear this. Now, the thing about the Lorrays is they naturally would sound like, these are phrases that sound like this, you know. It's like, you know, da, 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 da. They're kind of separated, but not really, but you don't have to re-trigger uh, re them, right? So they're naturally doing this. So it gives you a lot of flexibility with your phrases. And different kind of key switches. Let's open it up so you can see it. It's this first, my bad.
And we got staccato low rays. And you know, further control these with dynamics. And some even more, sorry, where am I going? There we go, F2. And you could, if you kind of offset him. You get a really nice kind of like, um, trill. So you can do that, you know, within the piano roll, but whatever. But, you know, that's some really cool things to do with them. And this is what I'm saying is you don't have to use them just like da, 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 da. You can do them alternating to kind of do these, um, like where I was doing here, kind of do these. Da, 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 da. And this is another use I've had for the natural um, key switch for the legato is I've layered that on top uh, to kind of do that. And just accentuate that. So that's, uh, that's something cool you can do with it. And this is one of those things, one of those tricks I like to use when I'm composing is um, sometimes you just use a patch that isn't a legato, put a legato on top of it, kind of brings out the legato detail without being overly dramatic. And I've used that in the cellos, which I'll discuss in the next video. But uh, yeah, you can, it's always a really cool trick to use, um, especially when sustain sounds so good. Um, and that's the Lorrays. The other thing you can do with the Lorrays, which I found pretty sweet, <laughs> is uh, put on double speed and you get a different type of short note. Where is it? There we go. Double speed and you get a different type of short note. So the da, da, it goes da, 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 da. It's a softer short note. It's just... It's again. It's just a different type of phrasing that you can use. So, in the context of a legato uh, phrase, you could do that in the middle to kind of like da, 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 da. so, like you know, I'm playing this phrase again. So, so do, you can do that. Uh, the bits in the middle, so like da, 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 da. or like you know, and combine that with a legato. I'll just I'll do that. It won't sound as good, but you can re-edit it afterwards. Like, where's with the instinct? Just do that on the natural. Yep. Um, I think with the fluent, that's the fluent one worked best. So the legato is on C and the fluent um, key switch for the Luray. No, not for this one, for this one. Put them together. So. Okay, maybe it's not illustrating my point correctly, but what I'm saying is you can definitely combine them in different ways. Uh, so I think I actually, look, I've actually done it here in an earlier part of the track where I was combining them. Um, so I just solo that. I do that. Did that with the, like the earlier part of the track. This just I didn't include it because it didn't. I didn't like it in the context of this track. But it could have worked in another track. So you can see like da 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 it kind of sounds a little more natural than if you just did it with legato 
um, you know, especially if you use the natural key switch at the time the the rays are uh, being used. I might do I might do this at another time, not within this video, but just to show you that this can be done um, and applied in a different way. You know, thinking outside the box a little bit. Uh, last but not least for the ensemble, sustains. Normal sustains, good old sustains that can be used for all manner of things. Uh, so I'll run through those quickly. So sustain one, sustain two sounds pretty. different approach and again dynamic sampling there's without moving the mod wheel I'll just put it right up you can hear this dynamic included in there and uh, Sordino sustains You know, if you wanted to do that, you can you can combine the sustains um, with a legato, say instinct legato, and it won't be too much, if you know what I mean. Especially if you use sustain crossfade. Um, combine those sustains. Especially if you feel that the, the legato transition is a little overbearing, combine that with sustain and it won't sound overbearing because then sustains are kind of lending a helping hand to the legato sustains. Um, so yeah, just back to the sustains on their own. Uh, so we've got tremolos as well, which are really nice. You know, do a lot of things. Now, trills, really cool. There's two versions of them, a normal version and a swell version. The normal versions, uh, you know, controlled by the mod wheel, sound really good. Uh, you got whole trills. And they have a little brass flying on top. Could be like, you know, your magical kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know, whole trills always for me kind of sound magical. Um, third trills, which are minor thirds, so it's like, you know. Sound really good in fifths and fourths. And just on their own, of course. And fourth trills, which I don't know if anyone else has recorded. You know, it's pretty cool. Now the swell versions, again, like the dynamic bowings, they have the dynamic built into them. And uh, this is more of a, it's a quicker dynamic. So I'll just put it all the way up the mod wheel. And holstrel. That was the third trill and the fourth trill. Uh, 
Now, options, options, options. This is what we're talking about. And, uh, you know, a <laughs> pretty cool thing is you can sort of layer these articulations. So say you've hold down something with the whole trill. And then you apply the swell on top of it. Pretty cool effect and pretty clever. I love that they've done this. Uh, now you'll notice also most of these, uh, I, haven't, I haven't said this before, but most of the legatos and the ensembles, uh, and like, you know, all the different patches have a second violins button. And uh, what it does is kind of changes the EQ a little bit, does the uh, panning, not panning, the transpose and tune trick, which is, you know, if you tune it down to and transpose it up to, if you're using, uh, if you're using different samples, they won't phase, so you can have a kind of different sounding section. So for the sustains, I'll just... Actually, it works even uh, with the legato. So I'll just get, pull up the legatos again. So here's your... Your emo probably will really scream out, right? Um, the emo legato will scream out at you, kind of thing. Really stand out. Uh, so this is what it sounds like. With the second violins button. It's a subtle difference, but you know, if you layer two of them together, they won't kind of phase and won't be a problem. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's second violence button and works across the board, really. I think every pretty much every patch has a second violence button. Uh, and you know, if you can, <laughs> you want to look at it, it's in the scripts right here. Script editor, and there's a second violence script, which it explains to you what it does. Uh, so it's tune minus two and notes plus two. Um, the transpose, so tune transpose, and some panning is applied as well. And uh, there's no EQ, my bad, so there's no EQ, but you know, that's kind of really helps move it out of the way. The first violins, so that is your ensemble, that's your 11 violinists. Your divisi violinists is three violins, and I've always wanted a, a section of just like three or four violins or three or four strings, um, recorded in a really nice hall. Uh, I just I don't know, smaller strings and a big hall really speaks out to me. Um, so I'll have a look at the legatos, which I've used here in a couple of uh, instances. So legato lost one. And, you know, similar kind of idea with all the different bows and lures with the legatos. So, very quickly, this is lost legato one. So based on the kind of score for, you know, the series lost. Um, I forget the composer's name, Michael Giancamo or... He has an Italian kind of name. But yeah, uh, so, that is so unprofessional of me to say. But you know what I mean. He's a, he's a really good composer. And there's a different version of it. Legato Lost 2. And you can see it's a more focused sound and can bring more detail. Say if you had a, um, you had a what an ET legato, and just do that with the MIDI mark. This can kind of bring it more into focus. Or in my case, I've done it at octaves, um, in octaves. Uh, here, where you hear the ET and the Divisi work together. So you know, I've used the the divisi, the smaller section for the higher um, 
the higher notes, the higher octave, just because I think, you know, three violins on top, right on top of an orchestra will still scream out, <laughs> sort of like an oboe does when they're tuning. Is it an oboe? Yeah, it's an oboe. Um, and uh, I've used it here with the other sections, with the, you know, the big choir section uh, right in the middle. Uh, with all the shorts, and they kind of really speak out and really add to the atmosphere. Uh, now you've got some general articulations here, which I haven't used. I didn't really feel the need to use them, uh, but I'll go through them quickly. Um, sustains. So... Let's build this up a little bit. Now, the cool thing about it is because it's only three violins when you're playing a whole bunch of notes together in a chord it's not you know uh 44 violins with the 11 sec 11 violin section this is actually three plus three plus three so plus three so it'll be 12 violins in a four four chord four note chord you know and this is pretty cool so if you want to build some sections of real divisions you can do that with the second violins button um and have a have a smaller section um, again, this is just about options and how you want to approach the track. If you want to approach it in a realistic manner, this can allow for it, um, although it's not in the same manner as LA scoring strings, where everything is, you know, divided into the sections they were meant to be. Um, but, you know, this is options and how you approach the track and put in detail and all different manner of things. Uh, Sordino sustains. Uh, and a couple of arrays, which I think they might be tempo synced in in the full version, but again, didn't use them. Measure tremolos, which would be tempo synced in a full version. Uh, staccato repetitions. And for the, for the fun of it, tuning. So it's like, you know, a small string section is tuning. Uh, now the dynamic bowings. This is this is fun, and I promise I won't keep you much longer. <laughs> uh, what I've done here is use the sustain pedal to kind of keep the dynamics going. Now you can there's all these different kind of bowings. So. Just a quick rundown. <laughs> uh, what I've done here is use a sustain pedal to kind of keep a dynamic bowing going rather than just use the sustain with the patch, just to take advantage of the natural dynamics built into the patch. So say I use this patch, use keep the sustain pedal pressed down, and then press it again sort of right in the middle of the phrase where the phrase is dying out. It kind of helps add, it does add a bit of inconsistency, which is what would happen in a real session. There is a small degree of inconsistency, um, but to the extent you use that and control the dynamic on top of it, and you get a sound that can be much more alive. And this is what I've done here. Uh, so I've, there's little dynamic control. Um, at the beginning, I didn't really need it because I just wanted to keep it steady. And then I just, oh, sorry, not sustain pedal. Uh, modulation and then kind of control a little bit more with the end section so it sounds like this let me just solo it
So it's very useful. Again, it's all by the options. Um, and that's how I used it. Uh, so that's the dynamic bowings. And last but not least, a solo violin. The legato is really, really well done, I think, on this one. Um, it gets a bit specific in what you can play with it, but it's, it's very useful and the tone is really, really unique and superb. So, you know, really cool, um, especially the soft finish one is really nice as well. So like your, your short medium bow, I don't know, uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, it can be strange with some phrases, but um, for phrases which are like more passionate, more dynamic, more soloistic, this really works well. And again, no sample is perfect, but as far as solo violins go, this is one of the best I've heard. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's programmed with the same consistency as the, same, as the rest of the library. So it's pretty cool. And you've heard it. it, it there's a section here that I've used it. Um, so I'll just play it quickly. You know, with a different use of some of the uh, the key switches, it really comes alive. Uh, and dynamic bowings as well for the solo. And again, this could be your even smaller section of uh, violins. So it sounds like this. Different kind of bowings. And you know, again, with the natural uh, key switch with the legato, you can crossfade into some of these uh, some of these dynamics and really make the part come alive if you put a bit a, a bit more work into it. Um, okay, and then we've got shorts and sustains. So sustains sound like this, uh, which I think they actually sound pretty cool. So this year, normal sustain. But of course, you know, kind of sounds sampled when you do stuff like that without the legato transition. But if you want to do kind of stuff like this. Again, options, options, options. And you can do that to bring some sections to folks. I'll tell you that in a sec. Um, sustain sword, you know. Tremolo, and it's like, you know, tremolo on one violin. Um. And harmonics. And I just realized I forgot that I'd use the harmonics in the sustains for the ensemble because there that was the additional key switch that wasn't uh, visible straight off the interface. But harmonic C1. <laughs> That's like the first note I, heard, I wrote uh, that you hear in the track. 
Uh, okay, so that's solo violin, solo shorts, just quickly. Spiccatos. Arp spiccatos, same idea as the ensemble shorts. You know, if you don't want to program it, just do that. Marcato. And pizzicato. So yeah, so that's uh, pizzicato. Uh, now that about covers the whole library. Uh, but I'll just show you this one little thing that I found was cool to work with. Uh, this section, I didn't end up using it in the track, but I wanted to use it in the in that big, the big section with the brass. But this is what it, it sounds like. I originally just wrote it with the Divisi um, using these shorts, the spiccatos. Now I thought it's with the context of that. It sounds fine, but in the context of the where the track was, it didn't work because it was too wasn't noticeable enough. So I put in the solo shorts on top of it, and they sounded like this to bring it into focus, which is still stuck on pizzicato. My bad. Uh, it's meant to be spiccato. to add even more focus into that and kind of bring it up in the track and build so it builds a little different section of its own put a bit of legato on top of it especially with the fast kind of transition and it sounds solo legato I'll just show you in the context of how I originally wrote in the track it would sound like this <laughs> that could, that would have been what it would sound like, but I just thought now it would be more dramatic to kind of like leave it a little more sparse and then dive right into the big section. Um, now, as like as you can hear, I've used these shorts in here, same way, bounces spiccato with the fast tremolos in the last part of the track, and uh, that about covers the violins. Uh, in case you're interested to know, and before you watch the cellos video, um, the other libraries I used was I used. Uh, Albion 2, Logria from Spitfire, uh, to kind of cover cover the violins and violas to support them, and some low strings from Albion to help with the double basses, uh, woodwinds from Albion, brass from Albion, and hollowed strings, uh, sorry, hollowed brass, French horn and low brass, and percussion from East West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra, because I still don't have a dedicated uh, percussion library. But yes, that will change soon, hopefully. Uh, like a dedicated orchestra percussion library. I've got plenty of other percussion libraries, but yeah, nothing dedicated like Cineperk or Spitfire yet. But that'll, that'll change soon, but that's off track. It doesn't matter. Right now, we've just covered the ADO and Daiju violins, and uh, I'll be back with part two of the cellos. Uh, so yeah, I will see you in that video. Bye.